What do you do with a failed vintage set? Let's work that out together. Hello, welcome to Lady in Waking. If you are new here, my name is Ashley and I am a pop culture geek and vintage enthusiast who is in my 40s and trying to kind of work out what my vintage style means to in my 40s. So if that is something that you're also trying to do or or if vintage style is just your thing, then feel free to stick around, subscribe, like, comment, all that good stuff. So today um, I attempted to do a, my hair is very long right now, so that is in itself a bit of a challenge. Um, however, I attempted to do a pin curl set last night and it was very small pin curls. Not only am I working with an extremely humid day, but I, I pin curled my hair wet. My reasoning in that is I felt like it had to dry. My hair is very fine, very thin. I felt like it had to dry by four o'clock p.m. the next day, right? Like I was going to make my video at 4 p.m. the following day. So I felt like even if I did them wet, they should definitely dry by then. And they should be really, really a lot of structure to them um, and it should be a very bouncy full set. Well, needless to say, this is a tight pin curl set that did not turn out and I had plans to do a variation on this style, which I still intend to do because I'm very inspired by this, so stay tuned for that in the coming weeks. However, my set did not work out and in order to do a partial updo, especially for somebody like me who has very, very fine thin hair, a lot of the hair has to go up in order for the front features to work, which means that the back hair has to be very full and have a lot of volume to it. So that style would not have worked today. One thing that will work typically with a failed pin curl set though, is you will get lots of texture. I do not get texture in my hair typically unless I do a wet set. And a pin curl set gives me more texture and more unique texture than any other type of set. So I thought today what I will do is a kind of salvation set, which would be or a salvation style, which is basically a style that I would do if the weather's super humid and my set does not turn out like it didn't today. And this will be another netted style. Now, I did not intend to do so many updos in, the, in a row. I know I did netted style a few weeks ago. I did my, um, I did my updo, my high humidity updo, easy updo a couple of weeks ago. So I hate to do another updo, but when something like this happens, I would say that more often than not, I do end up wearing updos in the summertime. So we're gonna go ahead and see what we can do with this. So because I have texture, one of the things I can count on is moldability. So what I'm gonna actually do is I'm gonna take a rat tail comb and I've already parted my hair to where I'm gonna part it to. Now, this isn't a traditional uh, vintage part, like for a 40s or 50s style, because that would generally be more over the arch of my eyebrow. So generally, for a good 1940s appearance in a set, you wanna start your part really deep, like over the arch of your eyebrow. Because my hair has a cowlick right here, I don't tend to do that all that often. I tend to just let my hair part in its natural spot. Um, and yes, that does hinder the vintage look a lot of times, but today we're not gonna think about that. We're just gonna make it work. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this top section and I'm just going to show you what I would do if my set failed, but I was going somewhere and wanted to do sort of a traditional vintage look. And because I was originally gonna do a 1940s style, I am going to keep with the 1940s theme and I'm gonna do a netted tropical style. And this is a style that I would tend to do if I was going to a tiki bar or an event where I'm wearing a tropical print. Such as, oh, even oh, just a floral top like what I'm wearing. So what I did is I just created a little bit more texture underneath by teasing just about midway up. And that's gonna give you some volume. However, I don't want a whole lot of volume. I'm not somebody who likes to do that, that real full S curve on myself. I like it to be a little bit more, um, a little bit more uh, conservative. So what I'm doing is just creating a little bit of balance. And then I'm going to take this section and I don't wanna manhandle it too much because that is what's going to cause the curls to completely deflate. 
So I'm just going to take what I have and sort of let the hair, y'all have heard me say this a million times, let the hair do what it wants to do. So I'm gonna actually take this front section and a bobby, bobby pin and just see how it falls with one bobby pin. And my bangs are now kind of hidden. It almost has like a swoop. So I'm trying to effectively hide my bangs. I've kind of created a, a bang section that's two different curls. And then I'm going to take, and I'm, again, I'm trying not to mess with the hair too much because that's just gonna cause it to deflate more and more. So I'm just trying to get it up there as quickly as possible without doing too much like back and forth. Because if I go back through this with a brush multiple times, these curls are just gonna completely go away. So I'm now gonna take this side section and I'm gonna wind it around my fingers and create like a sort of a victory roll. And I'm just gonna bobby pin that with a couple of bobby pins and see what happens, see how easily it holds. The great thing again about pin curls is that they do tend to be a lot more um, moldable. So your hair generally has enough texture to give you a nice clean victory roll. So now I've got like a section up here. And then I'm gonna take this section. Now this is the light side of my part. I'm gonna actually take this section and tease behind. And already I can tell you this is gonna be a little bit more difficult because I want it to try to look even but without being exactly the same feature. I'm not gonna do another top facing roll. I'm gonna do actually a I'm not going to do a forward facing roll like this one is. I'm going to do a back facing roll and just try to keep the same volume. And in this case, I'm just going to take a bobby pin and stick it down in the top. Again, this pin curl set has made my hair a little bit more coarse, which makes it hold on to a style a little bit better. most important thing is I do not want any sort of like see-through rolls where you can see through. It makes them look a little skimpy. I don't want that. So I'm just trying to sort of put my hair up in a mimic of a victory roll without actually it being a victory roll. I can't see what this looks like in the back, so I'm going to get myself a mirror and see what this roll looks like in the back because that's a pet peeve of mine. I want my rolls to be nice and clean in the back. And no, what do you guys think? That was super fast, pretty much in real time, and I think it looks fine. So now I'm going to show you a little trick you can do with these invisible hair nets to get all of this up off your neck so that the roll itself and the texture that I had for my pin curl set is really a lifesaver in this regard because it's just kind of keeping everything in place. So even though the pin curl set didn't work out, it still is going to be a pretty good, pretty good style. And then I'm going to take this invisible hairnet and I'm going to take the back of my hair and I'm going to tease it. But instead of pulling it up to the top where these rolls are, I'm going to just lay it flat across the back. Again, my hair is unseasonably long, does not need to be this long. And you can see this, this is an invisible net. It's a little bit light for my hair, but this is an actual like invisible net that you can barely see. It's got very, very wide netting. But I'm gonna take this net, place my hair into it as best I can. This can be tricky. It might take a few tries because the pocket is hard to see to get this even with around the bottom of my ears. So I'm pinning the top of the net into place. And you might have to crisscross a couple of bobby pins. We're going to hide it, so it doesn't matter. Take your hair and shove it down inside.
then you can take your flower clips, which are going to be the lifesavers for this particular thing. And you're going to place one in the center. And in this case, I'm going to do one on each side as well. This is going to cover up all of the issues in the back. That does it. It's not the neatest, but you've only got a little bit of this back here now that's showing. However, it kind of looks like your hair is cut like that because you've got your invisible net on. Now you can do a snood, but on hot, humid days, like the ones I have around here, snoods are, feel very heavy. They don't work as well for me. So I just like throw my hair into whatever I can find um, in the form of an invisible net. And then I just sort of hide it with flowers. You can also do a roll in the back, but I kind of like the general look. I kind of like the general look of, of the shorter looking hair as opposed to more of a roll sometimes. So you can absolutely do whichever one you want to do. But this is my example of what I do in a case where my set fails. And yes, it's another updo, but we will be back with better um, examples of sets, <laughs> I promise, and in the future. So hopefully this was helpful to some of you. If you have any requests, then feel free to comment below and let me know what it is that you're looking for. And hopefully if you have anything specific that you're needing to style for, um, there will be something we can offer you on this channel to kind of make that more, uh, make that less daunting. And we'll see you next time.